Hi, dear students. This presentation shows the use of different adverbs of degree or adverbs of intensity. It will help you to understand their use and form, and above all, to read your writing and your speaking. So, let's start. First of all, the use. I use these adverbs to express the intensity or power of something, and they modify an adjective, for example, in the sentence, the coffee was extremely hot, so you mean that ne that coffee nearly burned your mouth. Or it can modify a verb. For example, I have almost arrived, but you are not there yet. And of course, they can modify another adverb. For example, her voice is so loud. And there you mean that that voice really bothers you. Well, where do I place them? The adverbs of degree are usually placed before the adjective, advert or verb that they modify. Although, as usual, there are some exceptions. The most common adverbs of degree are very, really, so, such, extremely, or quite. Let's have a look at them. First of all, let's distinguish between readable and ungradable adverbs. The gradable adverbs specify the degree to which an adjective or an added adverb applies, and they are used with normal adjectives. Some of them are fairly, really, or very. Have a look at this example. Martin really is very good at science, so you are implying that this student gets very good marks in this subject. Well, the ungradable adverbs. These ones are used with strong adjectives, and some of them are absolutely, completely, totally, or utterly. Let's have a look at another example again. The exam was totally disastrous, so you mean that you are positive that you have failed. Well, quite is used with both normal and strong adjectives. When it is used with normal adjectives, it means fairly. For instance, the hotel was quite comfortable, the rooms were lively and big, so you are implying again that you really enjoy your stay in that hotel. But if you use quiet with strong adjectives, then it means to the greatest degree. For example, the meal was quite disgusting, I'll never go to that restaurant again. So you are so upset with the food because you really didn't like it. Well, another step in our presentation is how can I say bastante in English? Well, to express bastante, you have four adverbs. Rather, quite, pretty, and fairly. But, of course, the four of them are used in different contexts. So, let's start with rather. Rather expresses a negative idea. For example, the sofa is rather uncomfortable. Or even a positive idea, but that idea surprises. For example, his proposal is rather interesting. I'm surprised. The second one is quite. Quite is used to intensify a positive idea. This new application is quite useful, so you really like that application. But if you use it with a few, a lot, or a bit, quite expresses a larger amount. So, if you say quite a few people attended the meeting, in fact, there were many people in the meeting. Pretty. Pretty is the third one, and it is used in informal contexts and never in negative sentence. For example, I'm pretty tired. You mean that you are really exhausted. And the last one, fairly, and it expresses less intensity than rather quite or pretty. An example could be he plays tennis fairly well. Well, now let's have a look at these two ones. Enough and two. Two is translated in Spanish for demasiado, and enough is translated for lo bastante or lo suficiente. There is a key difference between them and is the placement of the adjective. With two, the adjective is placed after. With enough, the adjective is placed before. About their use, to expresses an excessive degree. 
word we use it to describe a problem of some kind. In the first example, we say he's not strong enough to leave that box. And Spanish is translated for él no es lo bastante o lo suficientemente fuerte para levantar esa caja. In this sentence, we use enough with a negative meaning. But if I use to in a positive sentence with another adjective, I am implying the same idea, but in a different way. For example, he is too weak to leave that box. In Spanish, it's, él es demasiado débil para levantar esa caja. In the end, we are saying the same thing, but with two different structures. In the example two, we have another situation. We say, it's not quite enough in here to speak. Let's go out. And in Spanish, it's, no es un sitio lo bastante tranquilo para hablar. Vayámonos. Here again. Enough is used in a negative sentence. If we change that sentence into the positive and we change the adjective too, we use noisy instead of quiet, we can say it is too noisy in here to speak. Let's go out. In Spanish is, es, es demasiado ruidoso aquí para hablar. Vayámonos. When it comes to improving your writing or your speaking, try to use other adverbs instead of very little or so all the time. For that, have a look at this table and I think it can be quite useful for you, since they are ranked in order of intensity. Well, if you express very, you have different options. In the same way, you have options for rather, or for a little. The best thing is for you to pause the video if you want to have a look at them with more attention and with more detail, but I will highlight the most important ones for you. In the sense of very, when modifying an adjective, an adverb or a verb, you have absolutely, awfully, really and all that. An example could be she absolutely hates hard verbs. Again, with an adjective or an adverb, you have extremely or very. For instance, my English teacher is a really kind person. And with verbs or comparative degree, we can use much or a lot. For example, her house is much bigger than mine. Again, to express rather, you have quite, fairly, pretty, as we have seen previously. And for a little, you have a slightly. In this sense, slightly is used to express like a smaller degree. For example, turn the screen slightly to the right, not too much. Well, after analyzing the intensifiers and all these adverbs of degree, try to use them as much as you can because they can be very useful to express the degree of different actions or different states.